Hello. In honor of Martin Luther King Day, today we're going to talk about mindfulness and diversity. Although the benefits of having a diverse workforce are lauded around the world, not all companies have an effective diversity program. It's not enough just to have a diverse workforce if the culture of the workplace doesn't allow for differing viewpoints and welcoming of contributions from all the members. An article from the Harvard Business Review is linked to in the blog post by Frank Dobbin and Alexandra Kalev, and they tell us that the financial industry giants like Morgan Stanley, Smith Barney, Merrill Lynch have all settled cases totaling nearly half a billion dollars in just the last several years. Sure, this led to diversity and inclusion programs, but in actuality, it didn't lead to change in hiring practices, and the study revealed that companies are still stuck somewhere in the 60s, trying to force people to be accepting. I don't know about you, but I resist pretty much anything I'm forced to do. The study showed that focusing on the bad things that could happen by not being accepting pretty much pushed all the discord underground rather than creating actual change. It also showed that voluntary programs lead to better results and more frequent understanding of when biases actually exist. So, we know forcing people to take diversity training is likely to fail if the majority of the training uses scare tactics and rules that must be abided or else. Bringing people together for voluntary training can be more effective. So let's just say that you're going to introduce diversity to your own trainings. Bringing a diverse group of people together, we can ask that they come with an open mind, ready to do some active mindfulness practices. This is a really big topic and I'd love to dig into it deeper sometime, but for now, here are just a couple of things that you can try. First off, we want to create an environment in which people are willing to talk, to have an open mind, be curious, non-judgmental. We want them to know this is a safe space for all concerned. It's important no one feels pressured or singled out. One idea is to have everybody sit in a big circle so they can all see each other clearly. Ask two volunteers to stand in the center of the circle, back to back. Ask the rest of the people to call out their differences, one by one. Color of skin, color of hair, one's taller, one's shorter, sex, clothing, shoes. With each comment, the two take a step forward, separating them. When they reach the edge of the circle, switch it up. Have them turn to face each other, and participants can call out what the two have in common. Each time the two take a step towards each other until they're back together again. Now this gives us an opportunity to discuss how even when we're different, we also have similarities. Another idea in a similar vein is to have each person in the room get a piece of paper and write down two or three of their most important moments, things that really made them feel good. Now each person hands their notes to the person to the left of them, and each in turn reads the accomplishments of their peer. This brings these people together, sharing that special moment, and the entire room can see how many of these moments are similar to their own. Now I'm going to walk you through a practice that I've done at the Compassion Center at Stanford and it was really one of the most moving exercises like this I've done. It's called the Just Like Me practice. Everyone is paired up with the person next to them without giving a hint of what the exercise will be. They turn to face each other, either standing or sitting, and while looking with an open mind at each other, they choose who will go first. And now the instructor will say these words and everyone will silently repeat them to themselves. Start by becoming aware that there's a person in front of you, a fellow human being just like you. Now silently re repeat these phrases while you're looking at your partner. This person has a body and a mind just like me. This person has feelings, emotions, and thoughts, just like me. This person has in his or her life 
experienced physical and emotional pain and suffering, just like me. This person has at some point been sad, disappointed, angry, or hurt, just like me. This person has felt unworthy or inadequate, just like me. This person worries and is frightened sometimes, just like me. This person has longed for friendship, just like me. This person wishes to be safe and healthy, just like me. This person wishes to be loved, just like me. Now, allow some wishes for well-being to arise. I wish that this person had the strength, resources, and social support to navigate the difficulties in life with ease. I wish that this person be free from pain and suffering. I wish that this person be peaceful and happy. I wish that this person be loved because this person is a fellow human being, just like me. After a few moments, ask the participants to thank their partners in whatever way it feels appropriate, and then repeat the process with the other partner. This is a wonderful exercise, and it's something that you can use in a lot of different situations, but in diversity, it's amazing it can be a very moving experience and for some it can be a little scary because you're really there with just that one person. It really can change the way that you look at them. I hope that you'll give this a try and let me know how it work for you. Thank you.